So let's talk about the mix. This is the biochemical aspect of breathing. And here's where I need to kind of contain myself a bit because the truths that become evident in this are shocking. It kind of, it's the game changer. When we look back at the mechanics of breathing, there's sort of this message of more is better. So we want the diaphragm to move well. We want the diaphragm to come back up. We want the ribs to expand. We want to be doing nose breathing. We want to work the exhale a bit. There's just this kind of more sense about it. That all changes when we look at the biochemistry. Both are true. All right, I'll try not to get ahead of myself. Two things that we're going to talk about, nitric oxide and carbon dioxide. Let's go after nitric oxide first. So nitric oxide is a gas produced primarily in the nasal passages. Now this gas does some pretty amazing things. First off, it dilates the vessels in the lungs and it also chemically helps oxygen get from the air into the bloodstream. It actually helps hemoglobin bind oxygen. The amazing part of nitric oxide doesn't stop there. It's also a huge boost to our immune system. So it works as an antibacterial, an antifungal, an antiviral, an antihistamine. It essentially helps us battle things that bother us. So nitric oxide, we would love to get more of it. And now you're wondering, okay, how is it that I get more of it? Well, guess what? You do have to nose breathe to get it into your lungs. So nose breathing delivers the nitric oxide into our lungs. That's our first thing, most important thing. Second thing, which is a really cool thing to know is when we hum, we increase the production of nitric oxide. And in fact, we bump it up by about 15 to 18 fold, depending on how we hum. And we're gonna talk about how to hum uh, to help give you that big bump. So for those of you who are hummers, you've already figured this out. In other words, you have already figured out that you just feel better. You may not realize that it's now because you're binding oxygen better and the vessels are dilating and your heart is happier and your blood is happier and the cells are happier because they're getting more oxygen. It's just that you know you feel better when you hum. Those of you who are annoyed by your friends, your spouses, your family members who hum, um, you can join the bandwagon now and work in some humming. So that was nitric oxide. Now let's talk about carbon dioxide. And again, here's the place where I really have to work to contain myself. It's easy to think of carbon dioxide as just this waste product that we want to get rid of. And it is true. So we've got this cool relationship with plants. We take in the oxygen they produce, we use it, and then carbon dioxide is our waste product, the byproduct of metabolism. Plants, just the opposite. They take that carbon dioxide in, that's their money. They change that then to oxygen. So we've got the super cool give and take relationship. And as we realized that, it'd be easy to think that you know carbon dioxide is kind of our bad guy. Turns out not at all. In fact, our body is so dialed into listening to carbon dioxide, it's actually much better than how it listens to oxygen. All right, so it uses carbon dioxide really as the barometer of how we're doing. When we overbreathe, when we breathe too much, again, oxygen stays pretty stable, but we drop carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the primary driver of the pH of the blood. In other words, the acid base balance of the blood. And the acid base balance of the blood has everything to do with cell function. And the reason is when the acid base balance of the blood changes, oxygen's ability to get out of the blood changes. Another way to put that is if we breathe too much, hemoglobin binds oxygen too strongly and it struggles to get out. So the cells actually become oxygen deprived, even though there's a ton of oxygen in the system. And even though you're breathing a bunch, all of a sudden the cells can't get access to that oxygen. Let's try this together. We're gonna take five huge breath in, breath out, and then we're gonna check in to see how we feel afterwards. You ready? All right, let's give it a shot. Big breath in through your nose, big breath out through your mouth. In, out, in, out. Two more, in, out, last one, in, out, and now just let the dust settle. Most of us feel a bit dizzy right now. And now it's frequent that I hear people say, yeah, that dizziness must be because we just over oxygenated the blood. Nope. You didn't change your oxygen saturation with that little maneuver. Maybe you took it from 98 to 99, not enough that you would feel that difference. But what you did do is you dropped carbon dioxide significantly. As that carbon dioxide dropped, it changed the acid base balance of the blood immediately. 
and oxygen got trapped in the blood and couldn't get to the cells, that dizziness that you feel is literally your brain starved of oxygen. Now that wasn't limited to your brain. What you just did, your kidneys felt, your intestinal system, your digestive system felt that, your heart felt it, your musculoskeletal system felt it. If we were putting an EMG on your muscles as you were in that dizzy phase, we would find that the muscles on the surface of your back your hamstrings, our pecs, the things that are just chronically tight for us, we're now even tighter. So the message is really wild and that's that what we do with our breathing dramatically affects the chemistry of our body. Let's keep the story going. It's not all dismal, not at all. Because what we know is this is very trainable for better and for worse, but if we know it, we can lean into it to make it better. The mechanism for this, our hindbrain, our medulla oblongata, is always listening to the pH of the blood and the carbon dioxide. And it's changing its behavior based on that. So if we chronically keep it low, we chronically breathe too much at rest, the set point just changes from our medulla oblongata. Our medulla oblongata is the part of our brain that drives our desire to breathe. That's the not so good side. On the upside, we can actually train the hindbrain to be very tolerant of carbon dioxide, kind of bring it back to its factory reset. And then our body hums along with a whole lot more efficiency just without us having to do anything. Most of us though have trained our hindbrain to be a different, to have a different set point with maintaining carbon dioxide by way of what we're doing with our breathing, but we can get ourselves back to the factory reset. One more reason to be interested and excited about the idea of getting back to the factory reset is what's happening at the level of our kidneys. So our kidneys and our lungs actually play together. I should say kidneys and our breathing behavior play together to the, be the biggest regulator of pH in the blood. All right, in other words, just how systems function. What your kidneys do is decide how much bicarbonates to allow to circulate in the blood and not. And bicarbonates are your second best friend next to nitric oxide. So bicarbonates help buffer the things that aggravate us. One thing in particular, lactic acid, for example. Those of you engaged in physical activity, for you to hold higher levels of carbon dioxide so that your kidneys also maintain higher levels of bicarbonate to buffer that means you will buffer lactic acid better. In other words, you can push harder during your activity and your body will not be bothered by the lactic acid that's accumulating. The flip side of that is true, and that's the part that's concerning, especially for athletes, is if you have been chronically overbreathing at baseline, blowing off too much carbon dioxide, your kidneys will now suppress the amount of bicarbonates left in the system. So when you expose yourself to lactic acid, your body is going to be very sensitive to it. It's going to be very unhappy with it. There's some technology that we use when we work with people individually called capnography. The specific device is called a capno trainer. And this lets us see exactly what's happening with the CO2 level so that we can look at a breath practice and give it a thumbs up or realize, ah, oh, that's not really doing anything or maybe it's even making carbon dioxide worse. So it takes the guesswork out of this idea of improving the biochemical aspect of breathing. Let's first summarize the problem. So the big problem when we look through the lens of the mix or the biochemistry of breathing is excessive breathing. And we're specifically talking about excessive breathing at rest. Most of us, once we engage in activity, it actually right sizes, it does much better. It's what we're doing when life should be easy. We're breathing like it's not 